everyone, Cyric here, and today I'm going to be playing through a bunch of games which are part of the ongoing Steam Summer Sale. I'm going to be playing them for about 15 minutes each, give or take, depending on the game. Some games are a bit shorter, so I don't want to play them for maybe that long, and other ones might take a bit to get going, so, you know, on average 15 minutes, whatever. Um, so since these are all parts of the Steam Summer Sale, normally I do this blind, but I picked a bunch of ones that I either found during the sale that I really liked, or that I liked previously, but I've never streamed, which are, like, really heavily discounted and I think are worth getting while they're discounted. Um, anyway, basically, this is going to be all games that I think are pretty good. Um, I also have written down their normal prices as well as um, how heavily discounted they are. That way you can get an idea. And again, this is a Steam Summer Sale 2018 going on, so if you watch this afterwards, well, it's not going to be that discounted probably, but whatever. Anyway, um, going to get started on this. The first game for today's stream is Puzz Gun, which is like Puzzle Gun. Um, it, let's see, it's normally $5.99, it's 80% off at the moment, it's $1.19. I like this game a whole lot. I really wasn't sure if it would be good or not, like, screenshots don't really do it justice, but the gameplay trailer actually surprised me, and it turns out that's super good. Um, so we're just going to be getting started, and yeah, I just have the default cursor for this. It would be nice if this game had a custom cursor, since you do use the mouse a lot. You can use the controller, but I feel like the mouse is better. Um, so this is a puzzle game. You, It has like three sets of levels, so it has, I believe, um, 63 levels? Yeah. Um, it has 63 levels. I've gone up to level 18. This game gets really hard really fast. Um, like, And I like that. Like, It teaches you kind of slow early on but it picks up pretty quickly. Um, so anyway, I'm going to be just starting with level 1. I'm not using controller, so you can't ignore that. Oh, so we do get the opening cutscene whenever I choose one. Um, I'm probably going to be skipping this relatively quickly. Basically, we are a cowboy in the Wild West, and there is a wizard in a castle, and the castle has treasure. So we're basically using a ancient relic known as a puzzle gun to fight the wizard, and the wizard's just going to kill us. So it's wizards and cowboys. And that's the plot, right there. This game does have kind of oddly long loading times between levels. I'm not sure what that's about. Anyway, here we are. And you can press um, E on the keyboard to zoom out and see the whole level. Normally you're zoomed in like this, but I usually like seeing the whole level. So by default, our gun is doing nothing. I'm clicking, nothing happens. But we take this yellow cube, shoot here at one of these blocks, and now it's a bounce block. And that's level one. Um, yeah, I do get escape goat vibes from this game. Actually, yeah. Um... At, this game gets very hard, like I said. So we got the um, blue cube now, and this one works a bit differently. You can use it to destroy a block. The yellow cube still is used for a bounce block. And I don't want to go too far in this game because, hey, it's a puzzle game. I don't want to show off, like, all the puzzle solutions. I will say, um, if you're watching this on YouTube or something, and, um, you want the game for yourself or any other puzzly games that I do during the stream, uh, go ahead and skip to the next game. That way you don't ruin the solutions for yourself. Now you might see down here, oh, we do also have, like, a gun, um, vehicle now. Um, let's see here we have three blue and one yellow by default. I can use the mouse wheel to swap between the two. Um, so I will say this level does one thing that I don't like that I haven't seen in any of the other levels. Namely, if you destroy this, there's spikes here, and there's really no way of knowing those spikes are there until you destroy it, which is odd because I've never seen that happen in any of the other levels. This is the only one, so far at least, that has hidden spikes. Um, you can just press R to restart though, so it's not that big of a deal. Like, 
what you destroy that and you lose five seconds of your life. Um, I'm going to be running into a brick wall pretty soon. So I'm going to fail this on purpose right now to show that this game kind of gets really tricky really fast. Um, and you need to be very aware of um, space, like you need to be very spatially aware. So for example, instinctively you'd probably want to do this, right? To just make a nice little tunnel and then go up. But this isn't high enough. So the actual solution is destroy this, 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 and use this one as a bounce pad. And there you go. Also, I have the um, desktop volume on OBS down quite a bit because I'm going to be playing through a bunch of different games. Um, if any of the games seem too low or too loud, let me know and I'll adjust it. Um, so this is the first level where you really want E sort of to um, see the full map here. And I also am not quite sure what I need to do for this level. That's it. Usually the obvious solution is wrong is the thing, which is why I don't trust that I just did the right thing. Um, but maybe I did. Who knows? I think. Okay, nope. Obvious solution was just the way to go on this. Around now is when the levels will start getting a bit trickier. We got green now. Yeah, green is where things start getting real. Because now green, what green does is you shoot a block, it makes another block in the direction that you shot it from. Um, and to be clear, this is a mimic of the block, so if you shoot one of these, for instance, it'll make a two-tile vertical block above it. Um, you can't shoot blocks in a space where another block already is, so like, for example, I couldn't copy this to over here. Um, also, you can't use a green block for anything. I can't destroy the green block. I can't make it bouncy, I can't make a green block off of a green block. Also, if it wasn't clear, these blocks you can't do anything to, only the gray ones. And now I believe I probably want to go down here. And let's see, that's over there. So I don't want to destroy both of these, I want to destroy this. Shoot that, do that, and there we go. I haven't seen anything in the terms of, like, replayability incentives too much. Like, there's no bonus collectibles i found, at least. If there are, they're rather hidden or come later. There's no, like, par numbers or anything like that. Um, you know, the, the puzzles get pretty tricky relatively quickly, so I don't think that's too much of an issue. So this one I need to be careful of. So instinctively I want to make this a bounce block, but that's not the right choice because we're going to need to turn this into a bounce block to get to that. Green won't let us get there. So I remember the solution to this. Um, this one took me a while the first time. We do that and that, and now I can get here. And that got me the blue that I need to in order to actually get down here. We make that green so that we have a um, platform to get past the spikes. And now this is a bounce block, and we bounce over to the diamond, or wherever this thing is. I like this music. Yeah, um, like I said, I don't want to show off too, too much of the puzzly game, so I'm probably going to go up to like level 10, give or take. Um, there's one more element of this game that I want to show off, one final block type. There's that, I've actually come across five, or bullet types, um, I've come across five different types of bullets, one of them got introduced really recently to me. Um, but the fourth one is the one that I want to show off. This one I don't remember at all. Um, can't really do anything over here. Let's see. So I have three green, one blue, and two yellow, and there's nothing else. So... Hmm. I think I want to be able to... Okay. So I want to bounce up there. I want to turn this into a green. I think I turned one of these into a bounce block.
That's a bit scary looking, but it's fine. Okay. So I'm going to destroy this. I'm going to turn this into a green. Oh no, I messed up. I need to turn this one into a green. I thought that I could reach that. So, I was right about that though. Destroy that. And now, let's see... Yeah, I could reach that one from there, so I should be able to reach... That from there, no problem. Um... Ooh, right, I only have... I need a bounce block, so I can't use my yellow here. But if I do that, that's fine. Now I can use my yellow. And I use my green here. And a lot of these levels probably have multiple solutions. Um... Not all of them, but some of them I've definitely finished with um, bullets to spare. Okay, so this is teaching us about lasers. Very simple use of the green one there to get all of that. Um, in this part, I believe, we want to go ahead and destroy this. Kind of need to turn this into a bounce block. Bounce over here. Uh, let's see. I don't. I remember this level. I don't remember the solution though. So I'm going to go ahead and just sort of wing it for a bit. Okay, seems straightforward. That use the bean over here, and yeah. Now I have a bullet to spare. Actually, just didn't mean to use that. Or oh no, I don't. I need that one too. I thought I had another bounce block. We got fireworks. Let's see, I know that the one bullet type that we haven't seen yet is coming up soon. And I really want to show it off. I could jump ahead, but eh, I think that this game's pretty good at gradually introducing new concepts. So I can use this to block off the laser. I'm not sure why I want to block off the laser yet, though. But let's do that. And now I have a choice. I could go either this way or that way. Um, I feel like I didn't need to do this. Hmm. I have one destruct. Oh, I only have one destructible block, so I can. There we go. Okay. Okay, that level was crazy. These levels took me a lot longer the first time through, so some of this is definitely just kind of memorization kicking around in the back of my head, I guess, and also the fact that I'm more familiar with the um, later puzzles, which you get pretty tough. They really pick up once you get the fourth bullet type. Um, I could block this off here, which seems like a good idea. So let's do that. Uh, now for this one. Okay, I do have blue, so I can use blue to go down here. Lock that off like that. Okay, I'm gonna use my remaining one to do this. Bounce pad. And I still need to get all the way over there. Uh, this needs to be bounced. This is not cave story, no. This is Puzz Gun. Um, I believe this is the one I want. I don't think... yeah, I need one that tall. So we do that. And... Can I reach that? I'm not confident that I can actually reach that. So I'm gonna just do it here. Yeah, I went to be able to reach that. Thankfully we don't need to land. He'll, he'll be fine. <laughs> Another level that I don't quite remember. This one I'm actually a bit stumped on as to what... Oh! Okay, well there's all of one real path I can take at the moment. Which is to do that. After doing that, I think I can... With this... Yep, let's go ahead and cut my way through here. OK, 
Okay, I need to destroy that with a blue. I can make a green here, though. Being a little bit finicky. There we go. That. Bounce with that. Need to be a bit careful not to hit my head on the laser. Okay, here we go. The um, new type of bullet. Probably gonna do this and maybe one more level and then move on to the next game. Um, so this one, reverses gravity. Uh, one nice thing is when you're on one of these, you're reversed while you're on it. Um, you cannot accidentally step off the platform. There's little barriers here. You can only jump off the platform. Um, and then gravity immediately goes back to normal when you touch a solid surface. So, for example, I can do that. And there we are. Um, now, let's see, what do I use to bounce up there? Well, I know that I need to bounce up there, but I'm just thinking of which one. I guess this one? Okay. That's a little bit dicey. Now I have blue and a green. Okay, the green I can use on this to cut that off. Yeah, it seems right. And now I have other green and a yellow. And a blue. Okay, so I think I'm going to use this yellow here, and use this green here, and this blue here. So yeah, you sometimes need a little bit of precision with the platforming stuff, but this game's definitely more puzzle than platforming, like you don't need, at least so far, like I haven't needed to do any incredibly precise or intense platforming. It's really about um, figuring out the puzzle part. Um, oh, this level had me stumped for a while. Um, actually, very recently even. So, one thing to note, um, if you hit blocks from the side, yeah, you can walk on the sides of them too. Um, and that's obviously not the solution we need, though. Uh, so, I am going to go ahead and hop down here. see if I can remember how this actually goes. So I have gravity reversal. Oh, maybe this isn't the one that had me stumped. I think it was one. No, it was the one after this, I think. But this is the last one I'm going to do for the stream for now. Um, do that. I need to jump. Hook my way around there. Oh, no. This one I did get stuck on for a while. Right. Um... Actually, I'm trying to remember how to do this now for the final part. I believe I want to... Because, like, the things you have are limited, so... Okay, so I think I want to, um... Reverse gravity... On this... Okay, I want to put a platform there and make gravity sideways here. Hit that so that I drop off on this and then get the gem. There we go. For a while, I was trying to go up on the left side and you just don't have the bullets for it. Um, or at least I haven't found a way to do it on the left side. As you can see, now I have four, one of each bullet from the start. And it kind of just goes. That was the first 13 out of 63 levels, so I don't want well, to really show off any more than that. I think that that's a very decent slice of this game. But yeah, um, around levels like 12 and 13, once the reverse gravity stuff is introduced, is where it gets hard. I mean, I guess just to show off the um, newest bullet type that I've come across, let's go to 18 fast. So, newest bullet type that I found is this thing, which 
This level's not really gonna let me show it off, I guess, because you need to actually play through the level. So let me just show 17 fast that has a bullet at the start. This. This seems like it's going to get really complicated, because when you do this, you make the block drop, and you can start pushing it around. Um, which is pretty simple in this level, but um, it seems like it's going to get really crazy with that, between that and the reverse gravity. Like, these tools work together in, in, in interesting ways. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for Puzz Gun for now. I like this game a whole lot. Again, it's currently, um, it's somewhere on this list. It's currently $1.19. I think it's absolutely worth $1.19. It's normally $5.99. Even $5.99, I think it's reasonable. Like, you're getting 63 levels, which is about average for a puzzle game, I guess. But, like, I went through these levels pretty fast, but they definitely took me a lot longer the first time around. So, these two worlds are probably going to be a lot harder than that even so you're getting quite a few hours of content out of this probably unless you're just a puzz gun master that can solve these levels in two seconds but they're tough this game's tough it's fun it's clever i like the concept i think the pixel art here is very silly but that's it for puzz gun because i already have gone over 15 minutes on that game alone and let's see, I have other puzzly games lined up. I don't have a specific order in mind, but I don't want to do a puzzly game. Okay, hello again. I got Power Gun uh, power Hover working. Um, I literally just had to restart OBS. This is the second game of tonight. Um, I haven't actually played this in a bit, other than testing it to make sure it worked with OBS. Um, so I'm a bit rusty on it. <laughs> And by that, I mean extremely. But yeah, I want to show off this game because it's cool. And also, this game is normally $4.99. It's currently 88% off, so it's 59 cents right now. I'm going to be loading up my old save. I don't remember most of this. So we're starting all the way from level one. Um, I don't know if they'll have the opening cutscene or not, but... From what I remember, the thing is that we're basically in a robot society and someone is stealing all the batteries that power everything. Also, I'm going to turn the volume down a bit because this seems pretty loud. There we go. And again, if that's too quiet, let me know because I've turned it down quite a bit. Okay, so yeah, they didn't go into the opening bits again. But yeah, there's a thief, they stole the batteries, we're hovering. And this game's sort of an auto-scroller like this. And you want to collect all the batteries and dodge obstacles and stuff. I like how it looks. It's a very interesting type of game. I can't think of too many other games that quite play like this. Like, it's not procedurally generated or an infinite runner or anything like that. Like, it's all specific levels. This is level one, so it's crazy. And yeah, it keeps track of how many of the batteries you've collected and all that stuff. Actually, wouldn't have minded if they had bought up a tutorial because I don't quite remember the controls and I'm certainly not bringing up a tutorial again. Um, I got an achievement of some variety, not sure why. Yeah. Apparently the first time I did this I didn't get all the batteries, so now I did. I made progress. Look at that, we maxed out with a syntax error. Um, and then that gets you stars which you use to unlock buildings which in turn give you new passives like more lives and stuff um i believe this is to go to the map yeah uh does this work with my controller yes it does yeah i like how this looks too <laughs> so yeah, we're going to do a few levels of this so you can grind on rails and he kind of attaches to them and I just missed that battery so I'm gonna go ahead and redo this. Um, okay this... I will say it's a bit harder to do with the um, controller. It 
the controls are a bit less precise. It feels better, but but you're losing precision with the controller. Oops, I just got crushed. Thankfully, I do have a whole bunch of lives. I should really stop um, hopping off of these things early. Because I'm pretty sure it wants me to grind along them like that. I can't remember if there's anything I can do other than um, move forward. I don't remember this game having much in the way of control, so probably not. And I'm doing awful now. Look at all those batteries I missed. And that one, wow. I'm just missing everything. I will say that the look of this game reminds me of something, but I can't quite place it. Might honestly just be reminding me of, um, Tyranny because of the whole desert theme going on. But, it's... Yeah, it's probably that's reminding me of Tyranny. Man, I got, like, nothing. So you need 31 in order to get the third star here. I think this button is just the next level. Oh no, that one also takes you to the map. Uh, what is this plus again? Oh, right. You can choose between different um, characters, I guess. Which I don't think actually do anything differently. Like, you can just... The human? Yep, that's a human. You have, like, a cyborg guy? Like red eyes going on. Weird. Um or UFO. Whatever, we're playing the default guy. Yeah, let's do a few more of these. Why is this Oh I guess that generates power over time or something? Hmm. Don't know. Why can I not uh, it's not letting me move left and right now. Now it is. Or... You know what? I'm going to say play tutorial, maybe. Let's do the tutorial, since it's been so long. I want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. I, d I really don't think I am, but... Yep, we move left and right. Don't touch walls, get checkpoints. Find berries. We did it, we're the best. We got all the berries. Yeah, a lot of this game is just moving left and right, but it it gets pretty tough later on from what I remember. And the levels get pretty long. I didn't really finish this game or anything, so... Like, it probably gets extremely hard later on. And so I have some barky dogs in the background if you hear them. Oh, is this just going to be the opening cutscene again? Okay, well, let's see the opening cutscene, because, hey, I didn't get it last time. Oh, I think that they want me to actually press the button. Okay. And that's the entire plot. Something stole the batteries. Go get them back. And the resolution is all messed up now for some reason. That was odd. Anyway, gonna go for this battery. I might swap back to using the keyboard because um, I feel like I have a bit more precision. Controller feels better, but I don't know. It's definitely a bit easier to adjust with the keyboard. So yeah, I'm gonna play this game for about... Uh, we'll do like... I don't know, five or six levels of this, maybe. 
I've been playing for seven minutes, but Lala has been me just talking and doing the tutorial. So, wouldn't mind showing some off. And now we have sort of these half pipe things. Bit Sonic y. Got some health I don't need. So, yeah, they change it up quite a bit. It's not all just going through a desert on foot with like grind rails and pillars falling. Like, you can see this is already very different from the previous two levels. And yeah, you do still have a lot of going through a desert with obstacles. But, eh, it's pretty fun. I got 19 batteries. Let's see... I can also, I guess, man, I got zero stars on this boss, apparently, so I got up to level 11. So I didn't actually get that far in this game last time I played it. Um, ooh, I got a medal of some variety on that. I guess the medal means that you've gotten all the batteries. I don't think it does anything extra, it's just, hey, you did it, you 100% this. Yeah, you know what, how about we skip to a boss fight? Which isn't really- well, it's kind of a fight from what I remember. I'm going to die a lot, because I remember this game gets pretty hard, like, relatively quickly. I said that for the last game, too, but it's true of both of them. So we're also going to be seeing a whole bunch of stuff that I just skipped past in terms of, like, um, new things. In terms of obstacles that they would have probably eased us into, but hey, I just skipped a bunch of levels, so... We got all these obstacles right away. This is already kind of tricky. That was scary. <laughs> so it should be able to go here. This is really cool looking. I, you can freaking see it, so... But, yeah, this is cool. I forgot just how cool looking this game actually is. Oh, I got a new high score. This is just going on forever because it's a boss fight? Oops. Okay, yes. Apparently a boss fight is just an endless corridor that you either pass or fail. That's not the level I was thinking of, actually. Um, wow, I did miserable on that. I'm ranked number 1260. Let's maybe backtrack a bit to... Let's do one that I haven't gotten that many batteries on, maybe. Oh, you know what? Let's just try the newest level. Let's see what level I stopped on. I don't know. I'm just hopping all over the place. So we have a bit of a, um... Oh, boy. We have a bit of a color scheme shift here. It's more yellow here. Still deserty. I think there was an ocean part at one point in one of these levels, but I don't remember which level it was. Also, I could just be making that up. Okay, walls are closing in. Not sure how that works. Man, that looks so cool. I'm gonna be saying that a lot for this game, I think. I just, like, the style of this game is wonderful. Yeah, I, I, I'm really sad that I wasn't able to figure out how to do display capture when I um, first planned to stream this game like quite a few months ago. And I haven't gone around to restreaming it, so this seems like a good time to um, restream it. I'm not gonna bother with that. Got a plane going on over there. I definitely dodged away from that battery. And here we go. I think I'm getting pretty close to the end of the level, judging by the battery count. Oh, boy. In fact, that's the goal? Man, I missed a lot of batteries. Oh well, I got 300 more kilowatts. Which are things to unlock the, um... To unlock all this stuff. Let's see, I don't know what these are, but they're rather expensive. What's this thing? It's dirt cheap. Collect an extra life once in a while. Oh, it just generates lives. Um, what's this thing do then? Yeah, sure, let's unlock a new character. There we go, I unlocked... 
Did I unlock? These are all the ones I already had. That's weird. I apparently unlocked a new character somehow. Uh, let's just keep going a bit, maybe. Oh, this is very different. I don't think I've seen a level like this before. Yes, maybe I unlock the ability to unlock a new character. Or maybe all those other characters aren't actually unlocked. I don't know what that red glowy thing is. I assume it's bad because red glowy things in this game tend to not be good for you. Some of these berries are really tight to get. Only 17 in this place though. I know there's at least one or two levels that I've played through before that um, you are chasing the thief um, and they are actively trying to sabotage you in the level, but I do not remember which level that is. I want to show that one off, but I just cannot remember which is. Oops. Seems like the game really wanted me to go to the right there. Is this like an infinite loop? Is this a puzzle? I think I'm in a puzzle thing. Okay. Is that's yes, okay. I'm in an infinite loop like horrible hellscape. <laughs> that had a single branch. Uh left. Let's try. Okay, well there's lasers on this one, so I assume it was the right choice. And a battery. Uh right. Mm, seemed like it was putting me towards the left, so I think I just messed up. Oh, no, apparently not. I think I missed a... I missed a battery somewhere, apparently, though I don't know where. It, I guess it was pretty hidden. That was a weird level. <laughs> I did get enough to get all three stars, though. Weird. That was very weird. Okay, uh, let's have this be the last level of the night. Uh, I keep saying the night, it's not night. Um, anyway, this will be the last one. Oh boy. Ah, I missed the battery. This will be the last one before we move on to the next game. I might come back to streaming this at some other point in like proper stream because it's a pretty cool game. Like, controls are simple, but it's not overly easy. Like, it definitely is kind of tricky to not crash into things. Especially if you're trying to get all the batteries. Like, I guess the game's not too hard if you're just looking to clear the level. I say as I almost crash. Oh my god, okay, I take that back. <laughs> But it's pretty hard if you're trying to get all the berries, but also apparently it's pretty hard if you're just trying to survive, because wow. Game literally proves me wrong the moment I say that. I'm going left seemed like it worked out for me last time. I want that berry. Nope, didn't get it. Okay, that was scary. <laughs> um berry, yes, thank you. Ah, it's the last one. So I think I've missed two berries so far, maybe three? It seems like it's one of the longer levels since... Uh, there's only 22 berries, but they're not coming all at once. Oh, that one's still moving. I just cannot go through a single set of these rings without with getting every berry. Oh, that one's coming at an angle. This is that one, and this one is... I'm dead. Okay. Okay, I assume they're all stopping around the middle, but I wouldn't be surprised if they change it up with one at some point. Oh, that's the end. Man, I missed a lot. I missed five berries. Okay. 
Um, what does this actually do? Oh, this is just a boss. Uh, let's show off one more boss, I guess. Let's see. I think the boss levels are always just a giant corridor where you need to get a minimum score that goes on forever. Let's try doing one more boss level. I don't know if you even need... I wonder if you even need a minimum to pass it, or if it's just... Hey... Do well. Okay, you do need a minimum. I do need to get up to at least 1,500. And I got a third of that. I'll give this one more shot. Um, oh boy. Oh wow. Okay, one more, one more shot. How many variations are there? Okay. Uh, that's yellow. I don't know what that means. Apparently it just means it's bad. Eh. I want to... I want to at least do as well as I did the first time. Oh, yellow keeps spinning. That's what happens. Red stays in place. Oh. Wow. Okay. Okay, that's enough of failing on the second boss. Um... I definitely want to show off more of this game at some point because it's fun. Boy, that is an awful noise. Um, yeah, I'll be moving on to the next game for tonight. That was Power Hover. Again, it's currently 51 cents. I'd say it's definitely worth 51 cents. I'm glad to finally get to show it off. Need to actually figure out how to exit this game. And now the next one for tonight is I don't have a spiz I keep whatever. It's night. I'll just pretend it's night. It's 154. I keep saying tonight because I'm used to streaming around eight, but whatever. Let's see, I'm trying to mix things up with genres here. So let's see, we did a puzzle game. We did whatever you want to call power hover. Um how about how about this one? We're going to do something really different. If it loads. Okay. I need a second. The game, this game takes a while to launch for some reason. Um, and that should do it. Let's see. And I believe... I want. Oh, yes. Okay. So this game is somewhere on Zibilon. I keep wanting to call it Zibillion or Zibillion, but there's not an I, but whatever. It's somewhere on Zibilon. Um, this game is normally $9.99, currently discounted 75% off, and it's so $2.49 at the moment on Steam for the summer sale. Um, I need to restart my stopwatch. There we go. This game does have a free demo. It's not on Steam. There's a link to it on Steam forums. It's on IndieDB, the um, demo. The full game's on Steam. I like the demo. The demo basically was the first level. Um, this game is weird. So if you like weird games, um, you're probably going to like this. Anyway, I'm going to get started on it. It's it's hard to describe what this is. It's sort of a puzzle game and sort of not. I guess since I played, since I started up before, we didn't get the opening. Basically, stuff is going down on Zibilon involving evil aliens or whatever, and they've sent in a drone. I'm using mouse and keyboard for this. It has controller support, but I think mouse and keyboard is absolutely the way to go. Uh, you can press H for help, and you get all of this. The controls take a little bit to get used to, because especially if you're on mouse and keyboard, it has stuff like the Alt key and the Control key, which I feel like you don't see much at all these days. You know, also standard was. It kind of does need a lot of keys. I feel like it could have used Q and D or something instead. But 
not the end of the world. Anyway, so we kind of just get start off like this. Um, by the way, is this game too loud? OBS looks like it's saying that this game is pretty loud. Anyway, our first obstacle, a wall. Um, so this is the, the same level as from the trailer, uh, or from the trailer, from the demo, I believe, so it shouldn't be too hard to, um, bypass it. So we hit buttons by just bamming our drone into them, and that opens the door. Um, I will say the noise of the drone is legitimately super annoying. I think I'm going to see if there's an option to lower that sound, because this isn't, this isn't a good sound to have going constantly. Full screen, light bloom, ambient music, general sound volume. Can I turn the ambient music up? Now what if I just mute this? Okay, well, apparently there's no way to escape from the, um, droning sound of the drone, as it were, but I've turned it down a bit. Um, let's turn it up a little bit more and turn the ambient music up. Okay, that's as high as ambient music's willing to go. Okay, we're going to resume now. Um, like, it is a neat, like, kind of very technological sounding noise, but it's not a good noise to have going 24-7. Um, anyway, we have this box. Basically, we have a timed door here, um, and we need to throw the box at the switch to open the door and go through. This level is basically one giant tutorial, but it has its puzzle elements. Um, this whole game's weird. Also, shift to um, rush forward like that. And now we have an enemy, so we have stealth elements in this game too. Um, when you see that icon in the upper left, um, it means you're near an enemy, if it turns red the enemy has spotted you. So use mouse wheel to reduce your ship's um, flashlight, I forgot to start the timer on this, but I'll just assume that's been about like 2 or 3 minutes. Um, and enemies have radar, so hey, you can't just hide behind columns, you need to actually keep your distance and be careful. Um, from what I've seen, if an enemy does spot you, you're basically screwed, so... Yeah, like, they don't have eyes, they just have a detection radius, and you need to be careful about that. Um, and now since we passed the enemy, I can safely turn my flashlight back on. This game is disorienting at times. Um, but I think that it's deliberately so, and I kind of like it. Um, so here we have the first sort of real puzzle. And the thing that's neat about this game, that even in this tutorial you see, um, is sometimes in this level they're like, hey, we're introducing new controls, so take a moment to look at how you're supposed to solve this. Uh, but then it th tosses stuff like this at you and you're really left to just sort of figure it out on your own. Um, in this case, I'm going to show this. So we have a giant fan, and we have something behind the fan. Um, and we have three buttons. We know these are buttons because we got introduced to the one at the start. So this seems to be pushing the fan in some way, but it's not actually, it's actually moving the thing behind it. If you, um, Look at the distance that it's at. And then this red one should move the fan. The fan does have a little bit of a delay on how long it takes to stop and start. So this took me a little bit to figure out. But obviously I've done it before, so it's going to be pretty straightforward. Now we press this to bring this forward. I think. Oh no, I haven't given it enough clearance. Now I move the fan a bit more. I think that's enough clearance. Let's like 
this. Okay. We fought this forward. This game is extremely weird. And now it's attached to that to make the fan start going. And now the fan's gonna just keep going. But then we can back this up into the fan. And it makes the whole thing get destroyed. Why someone would build something this way, I have no idea. Seems really unsafe, and seems like this fire costs like millions or billions of dollars to put together, since it's a giant hunk of metal that who knows what purpose it's serving. But there you go. Um, don't question it. Anyway, then you might be wondering what that actually accomplish, and this is where you need to kind of actually pay attention to your surroundings a bit. Um, it came undone from this. And you might notice that that's leading into the back. So if we go here, um, there's actually a little shaft you can go into. If I can get around the um, electric wires. So we can go up in here. And um, if I remember right, this next part is going to be really disorienting. Um, so if you get motion sick, this might make you a bit motion sick. Um, we're in... Oh, not this. Not this room. I forgot all about this room. Or that one thing. Okay, now we're in the disorienting part. So, we have these weird, like, swirling yellow spheres. And you might be wondering, what's the purpose of all this? Which is, again, it seems like the best way to solve any puzzle in this game is to pay attention to your surroundings. And the answer is, one of them connects to this pipe that we want to go into. Um, so we need to get into there. And the way to get into there is we need to find an entrance. So first I'm going to go in here. And this is where it becomes the di where the disorienting parts kind of come in. <laughs> um, we can't be crushed by them or anything, so you don't need to worry about that. But I need to navigate my way to that sphere from within this, like, group of interconnected spheres and it is really easy to lose track of exactly where you are. Um, I think that this blue thing is here to kind of give you a sense of perspective so you can sort of use as your north star to feel roughly which sphere you're in. Um, I'm already a bit lost as to which one I'm in to be honest. I think I need to start heading up. Um, there are a few dead ends in here. I don't know if that's the way. Okay, I've just actually managed to become completely disoriented. I have no idea if I'm going the right direction anymore or not. Um, there's the blue one. There's the blue thing, so probably not. This is really cool. Um, oh, hey, I made it. That took me a lot longer the first time, um, in part because I didn't notice this shaft the first time, so I was very confused, because there's actually two different entrances to this, so I kept going inside one and coming out the other, and accomplishing a whole lot of nothing. Uh, my drone's drifting forward, and I don't know if that's because it just does that, or because my... Okay, no. The analog stick on my controller was making the drone drift forward. Okay, there we go. I'm using mouse and keyboard for this. I said that before, but just to state, um, you can use controller. I could not imagine playing a game like this with a controller. It feels like it's designed with mouse and keyboard in mind, 100%. Um, the enemy's in your way. Oh, there's the enemy. They look kind of like weird fish, these enemies. So I want to get a box. And you can't kill the enemy, but you can kind of distract it. It's like, oh no, what's that? It's a box. Is that enough? No, that's not enough. I want to move it away from the entrance. There we go. It is very mad at that box. This room's a bit tricky because we do need to do some puzzle solving um, without the enemy noticing us. And we need to get pretty close to it. I think I'm safe if I hug this wall. This is the first one that's like, hey, you know what? You should really be looking at your surroundings. 
Also, if you think this game's weird now, the game's gonna get a whole lot weirder right after this. Go away. Yes, find the box. Good job. So, I actually solved this and then immediately got caught by the enemy uh, when I was playing through the demo. Which told me two things. One, this game has good checkpointing because it just started me right here. I didn't have to redo the whole level and go through all of that other stuff again. So each of these little challenges presumably has a checkpoint, which is great. And two, it told me that this part is somewhat randomly generated. I think the solution's always the same, but exactly how these boxes are laid out in terms of which ones are lit um, is different. So this said, hey, this is keypad, use your surroundings. So you can see there's that and that. I mean, it's a pretty obvious puzzle, right? Go away, box. I don't want that to be lit. So if you look at it this way, obviously it's all lining up. Now this puzzle's not too hard, but I it does have a little twist to it that I appreciate. So you do all that. And it's like, well, there's all these. It's also that and that. And that looks like it matches, but it's not going. That's because you actually do need to pay attention to the flickering ones too, which is a neat little twist. So that one and that one are flickering. And um, when I said that the pattern is somewhat random, but also kind of changes, it, the solution of which ones are red, I think is the same each time. Maybe not, actually. This is looking a bit different. But assuming that's true, which ones are solid and which ones flicker definitely changes. But I think this is slightly different from the solution I had last time. Um, anyway, we're past the enemy, so we can turn our ambient lighting on. And we beat the level. Not sure what we accomplished by doing that, but we beat the level. And this is where the game gets weird. Because now we're in planet control mode. I mean, there's not much to do this first time around, but the trailer makes it seem like this mode gets... Weird. Very weird. Um, because there's like... Well, you'll see as soon as this loading screen goes away. If this loading screen goes away. Loading screen. Oh, the game didn't crash because I don't remember. Okay, no. I didn't remember it taking that long to load the first time I played the demo, but who knows. So now we're on the world map, I guess is the easiest way to um describe this. So we need to capture Downdraft Tower, which is level 2. When the orbiter is near the locked base, a red lamp will light up next to it. First level must be completed in drone mode. That was the mode we were just in to capture level two. Um, don't move it far from the captured bases, otherwise it will be destroyed. Um, we can press H to see the full help, but we don't need that yet. And there's like crafting and equipment and mining and stuff in this mode. Um, and I don't know quite what all that means, but this is the whole planet. So this is again like quite literally the world map. Uh, we click and um, navigate the drone. If we go too far away from the captured base, which is level one, um, a missile will just launch out of the darkness and kill us. So we need to be careful to scout around without getting too far away. And there we go. That lit up red, which means it's a safe destination for us. And we've made it to that. And now we just press escape to go to the hangar menu. Which is a bit weird, but whatever. And now we've unlocked that level in um drone mode. Level 2, unlocked. So they have the little tips down here if you um, didn't notice that that's what I was reading from specifically. And then we hit launch, and when I played the demo of this, you start up this level and you have a wall in front of you that's like, hey, level 2 and beyond is in the full game. 
So I think I'm going to play through either this entire level or part of it. Because now I'll be going to this part blind, which should be a bit interesting. Um, since so far I haven't really been doing much blind on this stream. But yeah, this game's weird. I like how weird it is. Like, I like weird games, so... Music, you okay? That's odd. Um, I don't think that was... Oh! Hmm, the music starts up when I go down. Okay, whatever. I revived the music. <laughs> that was definitely a bit of a glitch. So let's see, what do we got? We have things that look like giant buttons. Are they though? They don't have the... Hmm. It makes noise, so it's doing something. Oh boy. The reviews for this game did mention that the puzzles are pretty hard. Um, I can believe it. Um, obviously the format's very different, but it kind of gives me a bit of a missed vibe, almost, in terms of like, here's a bunch of weird stuff, figure it out. I like that a lot. I like those types of puzzles a whole lot, where you really don't know what anything is, and you're supposed to just experiment and see what works. Like, what's just window dressing like that, and what actually has some sort of purpose. Oh boy. Speaking of having some sort of purpose, I did a thing. Uh, and that is still going through there. This going to crush me if I don't go in here. Okay. Uh, oh no, it's starting to go down now. But I think I need to find something to hold this bind down with. That seems like it might be the case. Let's see, I'm going as fast as I can now. Uh... Yeah, very mist-like with that stuff. So I've kind of figured out what the stuff does and what it's asking of me. I just need to find out how to make this actually work. Also, stuff below it. So here's something that's like sort of hidden, I guess. Very long corridor. Oh, is this where I came from? Might just be where I came from. Yeah, I think this is where I came from, in fact. I guess I came from below the um, elevator. And if I get stuck on this too long, I'm just going to be moving on to the next game. Since I don't want to be just me in this elevator shaft forever. No, or was this where I came from? Oh, this is where I came from. So... Not sure what the thing below the elevator is all about. It doesn't look like there's anything else in this room. Uh, let's see, we have this. Nope. Oh, all these lights are just ambient. I guess it's been pretty clear about what's a switch and what's a light so far. I think I need to basically do what I just did, except faster. Yeah, that is specifically pointing to that place. Nothing really happens if I keep pressing the blue button. I think I need to just press this green button right when it's at the top, and then go for it. Or maybe not? This one looks somewhat broken. I wonder if that's a thing. Feels like I'm definitely missing something here. And this is absolutely as fast as I can go. I think. Let me double check to make sure there's nothing else I can do to move faster. Shift accelerates. Uh, no, 
that's pretty much everything. So I'm not sure if it's just I need to go really fast or if I'm missing something now. They can't pick up other debris. Doesn't seem like it. I don't see anything else around. This game is weird. I'm glad to get stuck on the very first puzzle or platforming challenge or whatever this is, like right after freaking starting the game and getting into the blind spot. Um, so I think it's just a timing puzzle. Certainly seems like it's a timing puzzle. It is a bit suspicious. So the moment I feel the elevator going down is the moment I want to press this. Okay. And now I go for it. Okay, I guess it was just a timing puzzle. And how do I get through this? Oh, okay. That's there. And give me one second. I feel like the drone keeps falling. Uh, it's normally... Let's see. Space moves up. Alt moves down. Or right trigger on gamepad. Do I have like the right trigger depressed or something? Yeah, I think I did in fact because now the drone isn't doing that. Okay. Okay, that opened just fine. I assume all these levels are linear. That's fine. You can push some objects as a tooltip. I don't think I can push that. Oh, I can push this, though. Oh, I'm pushing the whole tube. And it stopped? Why did it stop? Oh, it got stuck on this, I see. So yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit further with this game, um, and then we'll move on to the next game. I am definitely gonna play more of this, though. Like, this stuff is exactly the type of stuff I love. Um, it's so weird. I wonder if I can rotate, like, I can? Okay. That's a bit easier than using the button. Like, it is very wonky, but it's wonky in a way that is really neat. Like, I appreciate the wonkiness because it makes for a very... This makes for a very unique experience. Like, I can't think of anything remotely like this. Like, like I said, the thing that brings up, like, to me is stuff like Mist. And Mist is very different from this in other ways, so... Like, Mist is a point-and-click adventure game. <laughs> And why did I bring this here? Well, first of all, I probably want to have it go along with this for some reason. Not sure what the end goal is here yet, but this seems like what I want to do. Okay. It, like it's wrapping around. Oh, I probably need to line it up with the blue thing, don't I? Yeah. Okay. So we this back a bit. And I want it to line up with that. And I think that's lined up as much as it'll go. Do I not want to actually line up with the blue thing? I feared I did. Or is it just Oh, it's just getting stuck on the ground again. Okay. Never mind. Oh, but I need to make it so that it can pass through both of these. That's... Thing moving? Oops, I keep pushing this when I'm trying to just get behind it. 
Let's see. That goes like that. Everything is spinning. Which is pretty disorienting. Though I guess that nothing that I'm actually working with is spinning. Um, so I think I want that shaft to go between... Okay, I think that fits like this. And then that will actually line up, right? Definitely a bit finicky. Okay, so that's lined up. And now I... Okay, nope, that can't be the solution. Not being able to see the whole thing all at once definitely makes this a bit harder. Uh, maybe I need to line it up through somewhere else then. Let's see, how about if I line up the bottom one with this? Like this? Maybe? Does that work? That doesn't look like it works. Oh, there's only so many ways it can line up, right? Uh, let's see... There's not that many openings in this, really, either. Actually, now that I look at it, the only opening is this one right here as, like, a permanent opening, is it? But what's actually beyond this? Oh, is this... is this rotating something else? Oh, I see. Oh, and I can move this thing. That's the puzzle. I can move this. This is actually movable. Didn't realize that part of it. This one isn't, though. Um, that being said... I think I'm going to call it here on this game because it's been going on for about 25 minutes and I want to show off more games. Um, so yeah, that's somewhere on Zibulon. If you like really weird stuff, um, I think you would like this a whole lot. Um, I'm going to definitely play more of this on my own time. Again, it's wonky, it's kind of finicky, the controls are a bit weird, uh, the drone noise can get kind of irritating, but... I don't know, it's just so unusual and so interesting. Um, and the puzzles actually seem neat. Like, they definitely take some thinking outside the box to solve or just looking really carefully at things. Yeah, that's going to be it for this game. Uh, because I have a whole bunch of other ones lined up still that I want to get around to. I'm just going to mark off the ones I've already done. Okay. And yeah, I agree, that game does seem impossibly ambitious, like, it's really crazy. Um, let's see, next up, let's do something a bit action-y. And eventually this will load. Eventually. There we go. I don't think anything's going to have a load time quite like somewhere in Zibelion did, but... Okay, this game is, um... Quite a mouthful, also quite loud, so I'm going to lower this a whole lot. Um... This game... Is... Capture, work with me here. Here we go. The Adventures of Clive McMulligan on Planet Zeta 4. This game's neat. This game I like a whole lot. And since I've been reading prices, this game's normally $5. It's currently 75% off, so it's um a dollar twenty-four. It's definitely worth a dollar twenty-four. I'd say it's also definitely worth five dollars from what I've played of it. 
Um, soundtrack's really good. Hmm. So, this game normally, as you can see, I've played through a fair bit of it. I don't know how long this game is. I made it to the start of World 3. Uh, this is all World 1. Um, so let's show how this game works. Um, it, it starts off as a pretty standard platformer. I mean, it doesn't do anything especially revolutionary, but it's kind of neat. It's very solid. And so you can go here, obviously. And sorry, I have dogs barking in the background again. So the goal of each level is simple. Get to the exit. Nothing special there. Um, this game's big claim to fame is they like doing stuff like this where they reverse gravity, so it has a bit of a VVV, VVV vibe. And that's that level. Each level has a zero deaths check mark and a master time check mark. This, also, if you're wondering what this is about, normally there would be a battery here that, as you can see, I just collected. Um, we're going to exit to map. Um, also, there's character select. You unlock different characters as you go along. I've unlocked um, the captain. Captain, Commander, Keen, whatever one, and a, um, not Battletoad. Boy, that remake's gonna be bad, probably. But enough about, um, things. It's an Assault Fog, you see. It's very different. I haven't played any of the other characters. I'm pretty sure they're just skins. Anyway, I'm just going to show off some of the other levels. Let's see... I'm probably going to skip around a bit because these early levels are mostly just introducing mechanics. Uh, so let's go to 1-5 for instance. This game's pretty good about checkpointing, like those little tube things that are spread throughout the levels and they're all checkpoints. Sometimes you need to go quite a bit without a checkpoint, but never too long. Assault Fog is a good name. And we're going to be smashing a bunch of these. And now we have more reverse gravity stuff. This whole first world is kind of very tutorial-ish. Like, they even have the, um, the final level of this world is even titled something like The Real Adventure Starts Here, or something like that. Because they introduce a certain something in that. You know what, let me see if I can get the master time on this level. I haven't bothered trying for Master Times at all, but maybe something good happens if you get it. I don't know. I haven't gotten a single one of them. I've gotten the um, No Deaths thing a few times, though that falls off quite sharply in um, World 2. <laughs> World 2 gets kind of crazy. Let's see if I can get Master Time going. Holding right as much as I can. Okay, that was pretty easy to get, actually. Do I get anything for it? Probably not. I got a floating star. Look at that. I have one star now. You have all these branches. So, let's show this. These things are everywhere in this game, and they are hateful. Um, one thing to note that will probably come up in this level, because I'm probably dying at least once to them. When you die and respawn, also pretty bloody death. Like, not super gory or anything, but more blood than you might be expecting for a game like this. When you respawn, it doesn't reset things. So, even though you're respawning at that location, like any blocks you've pressed or keys you've collected or anything else, you keep. The one exception is batteries. Batteries, if you um collect one and you die, you need to recollect it because they're bonus items. But also, like, these four things, like, take a while to grow back. 
So, like, if one kills you right near a checkpoint and you respawn, it's not going to immediately fire spikes at you again. This level has a bunch of branching paths, by the way. I've just been kind of walking all over the place and talking about the respawn mechanic. But yeah, you can go this way. And this first world is a lot easier than the second one. <laughs> Let's get into this. How about this is where they actually do start showing the real things this game has to offer. Uh, so right now we're upside down. This is a one-way door. Um, why it's like red and pointing downward. You can only go through it from the top. Don't have the key though. So these are fake blocks. The fake blocks take a little bit to get used to, but like you can notice that they're pretty differently textured from the rest of the blocks. Like it's not just guess and test. So we do go here, we got the key, we go here. This level is it gets a bit crazy later on. Still nothing overly difficult. This is definitely still kind of has the kid gloves on, but it's definitely in the process of taking them off with this level. Okay, gotta just push this a little bit. Go as much as I can in this direction. And when you reverse gravity, it only reverses for you and enemies, not for the boxes. Let's see. I want to go back here. I could have just killed myself and respawned here, but whatever. And I might be wondering why there's all these spikes here. Uh, that's because we need to push a block like this over it. And the important thing is, you do push while you're in the air, so you can jump over spikes and pits and stuff and just keep going. You do not need to be on the ground to push a block, which is very important to know. Um, because this game will ask that of you a whole lot. Oops. That's a shame, because now I'm all the way back here. But the block is still pushed. I'm very bad at dodging these spikes. And here we go. This is the big thing that this level introduces. Orange. And specifically, um, while I'm orange, I can flip at, wheel, at um, will. So this is very VVV, VVV now. Um, the one thing that's different from that is you do have momentum. Like, you do notice that he still rises or falls a bit um, after you flip. So you do need to be aware of that. But it's pretty solid. Um, and if I had gone through the other side of it, you notice that the one side is blinking green, the one side is blinking red. So if you go out the right side, you'll lose the orange and go back to normal. I like this part of this level. It's very atmospheric looking. And this is kind of teaching you, hey, one side's the um, orange side and one side's not. Now we're no longer orange again. Look at how cool this looks. And now we're in a jungle area, sort of, which is the second world, if we go down here. That being said, there is one thing I want to show off in this first world. I'm not going to go through this whole level because this level is hateful, um, but just to show it off, you see the giant three there. I need to collect three batteries to unlock this door, so... It seems like there's three batteries in every world, and you need to have gotten all of them to unlock the um, secret level of that world. So the next one has a giant six on it for the three from this world and the next world, for instance. Um, and these bonus levels are really hard. Um, like, insanely so. This one is also possibly causing motion sickness, so I apologize for all this motion sickness that's happening in the stream, possibly. Um... That one is really rough. Um, let's see. So I'm not going to go through this whole level because this level is really mean and quite large. We need to get to the cherries. The cherries are the goal this time around um, by opening all four doors, trying to bait this one into firing spikes. It's a bit hard to tell when they've um, fully regrown. 
Yeah, that one's fully regrown. This top path, I think, is the better path of the two, though. I am really bad at timing this. I had this down really well the other day. And by the other day, I mean just yesterday. Um, because I this took me a whole lot of tries. I died a lot. A lot more than six times. Um, this one's weird because... Okay, I guess you can outrun it. I have trouble outrunning that normally. Um, oh, that's scary. I'm going, like I said, I'm not going through this whole level because this level is just hateful. Um, but I'm going to show it off a little bit. This is the part that I got stuck on for ages. If you can get past this part, it becomes a lot easier. But it's quite the trek between this and the next checkpoint. Huh. Actually, I might end up doing this whole level. Nope. Um, I'll give it like one or two more sh shots. Uh, I'm going to die to this. I guess that they pulsate when they have uh, when their spikes are going to be fired. Otherwise, they're kind of just a blank sprite or motionless sprite. <sighs> Almost made it to the next checkpoint. Okay. I said I'd give it like two more deaths, but let's give it like what well, this will be my last attempt at getting to the next checkpoint. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Not going to be stuck on that level for the entire time that I'm showing off this game. Um I do want to show off the second world, because the second world gets really cool. Um but this game feels really good. I'm playing it with a controller. You can play it with mouse and keyboard if you, or I guess keyboard if you want. I do not recommend that. So the second world introduces a whole bunch of new enemy types and hazards. And you can see that we have the orange jumpsuit right off the bat. That's not always the case. Um, so you do need to pay attention to if you have her or not. This is something that was introduced in the first world that I kind of skipped past also. The whole fuel stuff. Um, basically, you have a jetpack. You can that has very limited fuel. Um, so, so far fuel hasn't really been... I haven't ha been asked to do anything overly crazy with um, the jetpack so far. It's mostly just been a means to an end of telling me to... of like roadblocking you almost like a key. Of like, hey, here's something you can't get through unless you've picked up the fuel. Oh, that almost killed me. That also almost killed me. I need to rush down this um, caterpillar over here. Oh, that went really smooth. Definitely didn't see her death out the first time. Um, you see, there's like there's split paths and stuff based on which levels you clear. Let's do an even layer one, maybe. Um, how about this? This level's kind of crazy from what I remember of it. It's very Donkey Kong Country 2 sounding music. At least the opening bit. Nope. Gonna be dying a lot on this level. And let's see... So, we have this nonsense going on here now. Uh... Nope. Oh, right. I remember the trick. There, so there's basically two paths you can take. And that was not where I thought it was. So, one path is the lower path, which is harder and kind of hidden. But saves you time and lets you skip the caterpillars. The other path is... Slightly easier if you take your time, but it also is a lot scarier. I, I think the top path is easier, but it's a lot scarier anyway. Um, and there's a lot more points for you to mess up on. The bomb path is really short. So how about we also do... This. I'm just jumping around between a bunch of levels to kind of show off as much as possible. So we have this. 
And again, I don't know how many worlds this game has. I think... Um, the Steam page definitely says it, but I don't remember off the top of my head. I can look at the Steam page fast to see exactly how long this game is, but I feel like I've certainly gotten my money's worth out of it so far. Soundtrack's really good. In general. Sound design's also pretty good. I like a lot of the sound effects. This part's a bit tricky to time. There we go. And now I need to kind of rush it. Okay, made it. Okay, now I believe we have a secret passage that leads to that key, though that might be on the right. This level did have me a bit worried because there are secret passages that are mandatory to get to keys um, that really don't seem like they're indicated all that much, like this. This seems like it's really just, hey, rub your head against a, a mildly suspicious part of the wall, but I guess that is kind of indented in an odd way. And you can kind of see that there's a staircase there that implies that there's more to this than meets the eye. Um, but anyway, this is for the blue key. And again, um, since I've collected that, even if I die here, I'll have it. I don't need to go back for it. So this game has really generous checkpointing in that regard. Like, obviously, if you're trying to get all the stars by clearing levels fast and with no deaths and stuff like that, then it becomes significantly harder. But if you're just looking to clear the levels, um, the checkpointing is very generous in a way that I appreciate. I remember where all these keys are, so this isn't going to take too long. The first time around, I got stuck on figuring out where that blue key was. Waiting for a gap in the rings. Finally. Um, man. And the red key is right here, which we actually access from over here. I have all the keys. And I still can't make it there, though, because there's laser beams. So I need to use this crate. And now we push the crate on this. And we go through. There we go. Um, so, as far as the second bonus level goes, I have not been in this one yet. And um, you'll probably understand why when you see it. Because this level is insane. Like, the first bonus level was insane, but, um, this is crazy. And our reward is a continue coin of some variety. Um, there is a purpose behind these, um, bonus items. There's a place to use them in. Um, but I'm not gonna show that off. I'll let people figure it out, like, stumble upon it for themselves if they, um, play the game. Uh, so th the deal with this is there's caterpillars everywhere. It's a giant like room that branches out that we start in the dead center of. Um, the, I can't really easily tell where the fake blocks are and we need four keys still. Um, also if it wasn't clear this stuff does push you in the, a specific direction so when I, whenever I cross that blue barrier um, it puts gravity back to normal and crossing a red barrier does the opposite. Um, and another thing I've noticed about this that I don't like about this particular bonus level is, um, the keys are in the hidden blocks. Like, somewhere on the bottom left, I stumbled upon a fake, like, disappearing block thing, and there was a key inside it. So, presumably the four keys are all inside things that you need to discover by stepping on them while also dodging a billion caterpillars. I'm gonna try this a little bit more just to see how far I can get. Oh, right. I just explained that you can't go the other way through that and I immediately tried to anyway. I don't think I'm making much progress on this. This level is rough. 
Um, these bonus levels are, hey, they're bonus levels for if you want the, like, super insane thing. And I'm guessing the thing they unlock is either an entire bonus world or, like, one final ultimate bonus level. So, you know, I, the real, like, the main game probably will never ask anything this crazy of you. This is here for people that want to do the crazy stuff that makes them die a billion times. I think that's enough of that bonus level. Um, and to finish things off, I think that I'll do a level in World 3. I haven't actually touched any of World 3. Um, yeah, let's just see how World 3 goes. As you can see, levels that you haven't completed are red by default. This is called Security Systems Online. It's a lab of some sort. Um... I know nothing about this world. So we have a turret. Okay, they're introducing switches. And we have some gravity stuff. Oh boy. Oh boy, okay. I, okay, I made it through with momentum. Yeah, this is crazy already. This is the first level of this world game. <laughs> well, hit the switch at least, so it doesn't really matter that I died. I think I need to go down here. Okay, there's the blue switch. Uh, how do I get to that? Presumably through here. Good start. And I can't really make it through here without... Okay. Okay, I made it. Okay, I hit the switch. Doesn't matter if I die. Forgot that was there. So it's a really good thing that it doesn't matter that I die. And there we go. First level of World 3. Um, so yeah, I like this game a lot. I like how it looks. It plays well. I think that the mechanics are fun. I think the level design's solid. Seems like you get a lot of levels. Um, difficulty's high, but hey, very generous checkpointing. So, I don't know. It, it's just very solid overall. Like, there's nothing overly um, mind-blowing about it. Like, the gravity flip thing is nice, but like... It has been done a billion times, but it's done very well here. So, yeah, that's about all I have to say about this game, which is, again, um, I just called it P Clive McMulligan when I wrote it down, apparently. I think it's Clive McMulligan on Planet Zeta 4 is the full name, I think. The Adventures of Clive McMulligan on Planet Zeta 4. There you go. Um, and again, that game's currently a dollar... 24 which yeah i think it's really cool seems very solid if you're looking for a kind of challenging platformer um i'm checking the store page really fast because i'm pretty sure they mentioned how many levels are in it on the store page um they don't say an exact number but over 70 um so yeah you're getting a lot of content for it like you can beat the levels within a handful of seconds if you know what you're doing, but realistically, they're going to probably take you a few minutes each for a lot of them. Um, and it builds on itself and introduces new mechanics pretty consistently. And all the worlds do feel pretty unique. Like you saw, World 2 has a lot of the caterpillars and stuff. World 3 had those turrets and switches. So, yeah, um, that game's good. I know all the games I'm playing today are good, but I like that one quite a bit. Uh, let's see. If I want to do something puzzly, let's see. I have a few things that are kind of retro-ish platformers. Um, but how about we move on to... Uh, let's do one more retro-ish platformer. Um, yeah, sure. We had a puzzly thing just a little while ago. Uh, now this game, I feel it's a bit overly retro for me. Um, I don't like it as much, I don't like personally like it as much as some of the other games that I've been playing today, but I don't mind it either. Like, I have fun with it still. 
Um, but I think people that are really into like the older like Commander Keen ever and stuff like that are going to really like this one. Um, like Clive McMulligan referenced that, but it doesn't play like that. Uh, this plays that way. So this is Murray, I think is how you're supposed to pronounce it. I'm going to be playing it with the keyboard. Uh, this game is very, very retro. Doesn't seem overly long, but I also don't know how long the later ones are. I went through the first one pretty quickly. And this game, let's see, this game's normally $3.99. It's currently 87% off and discounted down to $0.51 cents by the looks of it. So yeah, it's pretty much dirt cheap at the moment. So you could get this and Power Hopper combined for like a dollar, which is certainly not bad. Anyway, I need to get my timer back. There we go. We're just going to be going through this. And there are multiple difficulties. I played through this on normal before. I'm tempted to try it on hard, but you know what? Let's just try it on normal to show off the game properly on the standard difficulty. Gonna be going through this a little bit fast. Uh, basically, scientists on Mars made a armor suit with a lot of power, and then the powers of Mars and Earth um, got scared and sent like things to the base to destroy it. But then um, Mars itself just vanished. Apparently. Anyway, we're in the super power suit. Um. So the jump takes a bit to get used to, and no, this game doesn't have music because it's being as retro as it possibly can. So the jump definitely takes a bit to get used to, but also feels like it's proper for the um, time that's trying to mimic. You have this very high, very floaty jump that kind of goes down very fast. You can control it. Um, you can ch you can adjust the frame rate, by the way. You can do either um, 15 frames per second, I think, or 30 if you want to be smoother. Um, I have it set to 30 because the game's trying as size it can to be retro, but I, I want it to look a little bit smoother than that. Um, so, yeah. And, yeah, this is what this is like. You have collectibles that are worth points that don't really do anything. You have guns that upgrade. You have a bunch of secrets. Like, it's very Commander Keen, like, inspired or of that era. Um, a lot of people, I think, compared it to the um, 2D Duke Nukem games I saw. I never played them myself, but I've seen them around, so I could see it. That's the exit to level. You can just leave the very first level just like that. Um, but you know, there's secrets to be found, so why would you do that? This thing you can ride up and down. That I would like to get. There we go. And energy is just health. There aren't any instant death pits, so you can usually pretty safely, um, fall down stuff like this without worrying too much. Um, let's see, you can just destroy these. And it does tell you at the end of the level the percentage of things that you've found, so you can know exactly how much you missed. Ooh, I missed this the first time. But yeah, if you like games like this, uh, kind of really old-school style, or if you just actually like some of the older games like this, um, it does a good job of, like, giving that feeling. Um, like, just lots of secrets, lots of collectibles, lots of things that might not do much, but hey, it's a collectible. That gives you points. Um, you know, there is a real sense of discovery here, and I have not figured out how to get to this at all, by the way. Um, oh, you know what? It's probably... That's how you get to it. I figured it out. And... Oh! Score 100%. I guess it does tell you the percentage. Is there a percentage there the whole time, and I just haven't noticed it? No. Okay. So it's normally score, but once you have everything, it'll tell you. I didn't realize that. That's good to know. Um, so we get a little cutscene here.
Uh, let's see. Go. And... There's some sort of secret up here. Or is that just from the things I just got? Nope. Okay. So the energy is your health if you can't, um, tell. And again, on normal, this game's not really that hard. Um, I didn't die at all in this first setup, at least in this, like, first set of levels. Um, though, who knows, maybe the later levels get pretty hard on normal. And yeah, there are two difficulties after this. I don't know what that changes. I don't know if it's just a difficult, if it's, like, just a damage thing, or if it changes enemy placement, or what. I haven't tried it out. Um... Oh, right. And you can damage enemies by hopping on them, so you don't need to worry about falling on enemies. It'll work it to your advantage like it just did there. Um, so which weapon you have also um, changes automatically. So right now, for example, I have 22 spread shot ammo. Once I run out of this, it'll go to rapid fire, and then it'll go back to the generic ammo. Got another one up. I guess if you want to save ammo, you can just um, ground stomp things like that. Right now, I'm trying to... I'm not going to 100% every one of these levels, but I am trying to do as much as I can, I guess. Like, the game does play well. Um, I do like my games to have music, but, you know, if you're going for, like, the old Amiga days and stuff, then you didn't have that. You had literal blips and bloops and whatnot. Um, still not 100% on this level. Am I missing? I do like the little signs that give you an idea of where the exit actually is, so that you're not just wandering around aimlessly if you've been collecting things for a while. Let's see, the exit is around here, apparently. Oops. Oh, there's collectibles in this room. Still not 100%. I'm curious as to what percent I am at. Oh, killing that was 100%. So enemies count towards percentage. Good to know. I think there's five levels in this first set. Maybe four? No, there's five. One of them's a boss level. Maybe even six in that case? I can't remember. There's five or six for sure. So now we're introduced to robots, which are a bit tougher than the other things, and certainly also a bit harder to um, stomp on since they're taller. I think that there's another enemy that will be showing up in this level. It might show up in the next one, though. So I lost my spread shot, ran out of ammo for it. Seems like your health refills at the start of every level, though um, your um, ammo carries over. Also, the... what else is there? Oh, there's that. It's really hard to do commentary when there's no music going, by the way. Um, you can feel the silence. So, uh, I could exit this level early, but I want to show off a little bit more since this level is one of the ones that gets kind of interesting. Um, like I said, I like this game. I It's just, if you're not into Amiga-style stuff, this game is very... It's pretty faithful to that era. So if you want your games to have music, if you want them to have a bit more in the way of... Um, fluid controls. This isn't really doing that. It is very much trying to feel like something from the Amiga, for real. Um, no, it probably, it has like a few modern game design things I feel like definitely are a bit more modern. Like, it's pretty generous with um, health and lives and stuff. So, it's not just constantly trying to murder you in horrible ways. Um, which I feel is something that Amiga games certainly did. The level design feels like it's balanced. <laughs> um, but other than that, it feels like something that could have actually existed from that era. I'm not an expert on Amiga by any means. 
So I'm not sure if it's 100% faithful in every way, but it's pretty faithful. Um, how do you get that? I probably need to enter from over there. Yep. You take that there, go here. When in doubt, it's probably that there's a secret somewhere. And I have 100% score, which means I can leave. Uh, okay. Right, that led to the exit. It does seem like you can finish these levels very, very quickly if um, you're just going for the exit. Something I wanted out of one of these levels, I think this is the final level before the boss, um, which means that this is level that has the thing I want. Okay, so this is the thing that starts showing up in this level. It's this little, like, weird uh, phantom thing that kind of chases you. I think it's an assassin of some sort, maybe. Um, as far as I can tell, it just randomly spawns. Um, I killed it once, and then it spawned again, like, a few, um, seconds later. Like, maybe a minute later. Um, so, yeah, you, I don't think it counts towards percentage is what I'm getting at. I think you just need to sort of deal with it or run from it. And you might notice that the cell thing was, um, it's flashing there. Oh, that, this is a bad spot to be for that. So that cell is over there, and I do want that. Um, I want that a lot for the next level, because it's, you'll see what it is. It, it's very helpful, is what it is. Can I make that jump? I can. This spreadshot's really good if you can get at um close range. And he went flying off into the abyss. Um I'm taking some damage here. And do all sorts of weird triangle jumping because of how floaty your jump is. Get that, to get that. I think I 100% this level the first time I went through it. This might have been the only level I 100%ed on my um, other attempt, actually. Uh, let's see. Oh, is there anything beyond this? I think there is. Yeah. There's a secret. A bit hard to do that without, gain without taking damage along the way, but it's not like spikes kill you, they just hurt. Oh, I need to go right there. Well, I'm going to loop around real fast, because I would very much like to go to the right. Hold right. Land on this. Get this. Oh, that's bad. Oh, he really just books it the moment you um hit him, it seems. It certainly seems like he's sticking around. Oh, now he did. Okay. Oh, I killed and got an extra life out of that. And I destroyed the thing that was blocking the cell. That's apparently still not 100%. Oh, because of this room. Now that's 100%. And where exactly was the exit? I don't actually remember where the exit is. Not up here. This was all for the cell. Um... Oh, I think the exit was blocked off initially, and then, yeah. Okay. Man, I'm getting 100% on all these. Um, and here we go. This is the final level of this set. Like I said, I'm not really sure how long this game is, because this first set isn't too long at all, but I've, it also is sort of a tutorial, I guess. So, we got a new weapon, the laser. Um, which was blocked off by that door that I needed to sell for. So that's going to help a lot here, because this is the first boss of the game. And it's the um, defense system. And you can see its health bar up there. And basically it's a bunch of turrets that come in, but it's also these little spinning orb things. And the orb things are real nasty if you let them um, stick around for too long. They fire quite a bit. That 
And the laser is good because if it hits a wall, it'll start bouncing around like crazy, so that's kind of good even if you miss. But if you actually get the hit off, then it's a one-hit kill, which helps a whole lot. And it looks like I'm dropping some frames. That's unfortunate. Um, hopefully that'll clear up. If not, then I'll start stop the stream and restart. Um, but anyway, that's this whole first thing. Um, and I got 100% on ev on all of it. I wonder if that changes anything. Oh, I'm dropping a lot of frames. So I'm going to finish this up and then stop the stream. Maybe give OBS a minute or two and restart the stream. Not sure how much of that was even coming through because the stream is going kind of haywire. But it'll be fine on the recording at least. So I think that the thing here that's a bit of a twist is they mentioned like the um the child or whatever that was designed for the special suit or whatever, and I think you're supposed to be under the assumption that you're playing as them, though if you notice the name on the bottom, you are in fact playing as I believe the father. And go to next episode? No. Um, and I can exit to DOS. But that's, um, Murray. Um, and I'll be right back as soon as I figure out what's going on with OBS, because I'm dropping a ton of frames. So, one moment, and then the stream will be back. Thanks for watching so far. <laughs> 